Welcome back to the beginner series. Today we're going to be talking all about paint and paint consistency. So when dot painting, paint consistency is probably one of the most important things. Um, if you guys watched the introduction to the beginner series, I mentioned how when I first started painting, I bought a paint set off of Amazon. I think it was an Arteza outdoor paint and it was so thick. So when I did my first painting, it came out horrible, <laughs> and um, mainly because I didn't have the skill yet, but also because the paint was way too thick, and I just didn't know that yet. So I feel like it's really important as beginners to be aware of paint consistency and how that can affect the outcome of your painting. So today I'm gonna be going through um, and showing you a paint that is a little bit too thick and how to fix it, as well as a paint that is a little bit too thin and how to fix it, and then one that is just right. And then I'll also be showing you how to get dimensional dots with a few different types of paint. So yeah, we can just dive right into it. I am first going to show you the paint that is just right so that we have something to compare it to. So my paint of choice is Deco Art Americana acrylic paint. So this is a craft paint and can be found at most craft stores in the United States. I know that it's a little bit more difficult to find in other countries, um, but this is the paint that I use. I like it because it's a perfect consistency straight out of the bottle. I also like that it's convenient to get at the stores, at the local stores. So if I run out of a color, I can just go grab it from the store. I don't have to order online and wait for it to get to me which is important to me because I do a lot of paintings and I need to have easy access to the paint that I choose. So this is the paint that I prefer. Again, the consistency is perfect right out of the bottle, which is so convenient. So this will kind of be the paint that we're gonna compare the other ones to. So we are going to pour this into our paint palette. And as you can see, any mounds that were in there are self-leveling. So it is leveling out, smoothing out on its own, which is what we want. So I'm going to pour a little bit more just so you guys can see the texture. So you can see it's a little more runny, but then when it comes down here, it's self-leveling. So those mounds, are smoothing out on their own, which is what we want. So even if you don't have this in your country or it's hard to get, you can just look at the texture and consistency of this and try to get yours to match. So now I'm going to take a dotting tool and we're just going to look at the consistency of this paint. So when you lift it up, you can see that there's a mound of paint underneath. That is also what we want. And when you lift the tool up, you can see that the paint isn't peaking. Or if it does make a peak, it goes back down and self-levels again. So if you're lifting your tool up and it has peaks, that means it's a little bit too thick but you also want to be able to lift the tool up and have a little mound underneath and that's going to help us get a nice round dot. So another important thing when making your dots, if you just push down hard, sometimes it can make the dot a little bit uneven or sometimes it can get little ripples in it. So what we like to do in the dotting world is called kissing the surface, which is where you're just like lightly hovering. And sometimes I do little tapping motions to get a little bit more paint off and get that nice mound. We want that nice mound. You want a mound and not like a nipple looking thing. If it has like a nipple or a peak, that means the paint is a little bit too thick. So we want just the nice little 
mound. So I always look underneath my tool and just make sure that there's some paint coming off. And then when you lift up, there should be a mound. I personally like the mounds. I feel like it gives the dots dimension, but if you wanted to flatten them out, you could just take a stylus tool and flatten out that paint. So let's now just grab a stylus. And again, when you lift up, you can see there's a little bit of like a mound underneath. that is making perfect dots. We can also do like a little swoosh. We will have a whole video all about swooshes. Don't worry. Okay, so that is the consistency of the paint that we want. So now I'm gonna show you one that is a little bit thick. So this is another brand, Folk Art. This can also be found in most craft stores in the United States. It's usually Folk Art and Deco Art. Um, this is also a great paint. It's very opaque and they have really nice colors, but it is a little bit thick for dot art, which is fine. I personally just prefer to have a great consistency right out of the bottle, so that's why I like the deco art. But if you want to use folk art, this is also a great brand. It just needs to be thinned out a little bit. So I am just going to shake it a bit. So I just want you to remember the consistency of this one and how it self levels, and then we're going to compare that to folk art and see the difference. So we're just let, looking at it and seeing if we can see difference in texture and consistency. So as you can see, this one just has a little more body, more texture. It's not leveling out as flat as this one. You can still see some of the mounds and ripples. And that is how we know that it's just a tiny bit too thick. So let's just test it out and see if we can notice any difference. So I'm just taking a dotting tool. And I know it's like very subtle, but when we lift up, see that peak and then also when we look underneath it's not so much a mound like this one was it has more of a point and that is also how we know it's just a little bit thick so let's try making a dot Now let's compare these dots to the deco art. So I know it's hard to see on camera, but these ones have more of like a peak or a mound. And they do look, they have that more nipple look. I don't know how else to describe it, sorry guys. So these ones are nice and flat and smooth and these ones have, it's not just a mound. Like these ones do have like a dome almost, but these are they're not quite a peak, but definitely have like that nipple look. So if you wanted, you could again, take a stylus tool and just kind of flatten them out. And again, that looks better, but it still leaves like a little bit of a peak. So these are just textured almost, whereas we want the dots to be really nice and smooth. So it's not bad, it's just a little bit thick. So let's just test out. Let's 
some dots. Again, not bad. Like this is still a good paint. They're just a little bit more textured, which is not bad. Sometimes people want their dots a little bit more textured and to have that shape and mound. So I definitely just recommend if you're a beginner and say you're gonna go to the craft store to pick your paint, I definitely recommend just grabbing a few different brands of paint, maybe just one bottle of each in the same color and just test them out. Test out dots and see what you like best. There's another brand, I think at Michael's or Hobby Lobby, it's called Anita's. And they have really pretty colors too. And I grabbed some before to try and I just found that the texture was really sticky. So when I made my dot and lifted up, there was like a big sticky strand of paint and I did not like that. So I think it's important to just test out different um, paints and find the texture and consistency that you like. Um, I'm going to test one more because the full art is thick, but it's not like super, super thick. So I have this shuttle art that I got on Amazon, which if I remember correctly, it's really thick. So I want to just show you the difference. So even this one's starting to self-level a bit. It's flattening out on its own. But then look at this one. This one kind of looks like a pile of poo. <laughs> and... It just, that is really thick. So let's test this one so we can see the difference. I am grabbing my dotting rod and we are going to lift up. And as you can see, that left an actual peak. See how that paint is standing straight up? And then look underneath and that has a spike. So that just means this is a little bit too thick. And I'll show you what it looks like when we make a dot. So as you can see those dots, I mean, this still has a point it's not self-leveling it's staying spiky like that and then these those definitely have a spike or a peak so some people like that look but in dot painting we do a lot of top dots where we let the first dot dry and then do a top dot on top these ones would be really difficult to top dot again if that's the only paint that you have to work with you could take a stylus and flatten those out a little bit. But even where you lift up the tool, there's going to be a little peak. So it's better, but not perfect. You're still gonna have that little, that little peak there. So this is a good paint to show you how we can thin it out. So we will use this one. And then I like to use um, if the paint is too thick, I like to use a fluid medium. So this is my fluid medium of choice, Liquitex Basic Acrylic Matte Fluid Medium. So this I also can get at my local craft stores or on Amazon, um, but this fluid medium will thin the paint out. You just wanna look for a fluid or flow medium, something that is going to make your paint thinner. So this is our thick one here. So I'm just going to start with some and then I'm just grabbing a mixing brush. I just have a gross mixing brush that's full of paint, so just ignore that. So 
So we are just making sure that is all mixed together. And then as I'm mixing, I'm going to lift up the brush and see if we're still getting those peaks. That is a way that you can tell if the texture is still too thick. Lift up the brush. Are you still getting peaks? Yes, we are. So we just need to add more. And as you can see, this is like a cloudy white color, but it does dry clear. So it might change the color of your paint just a bit, but when it dries, it'll dry clear. Also, when you're mixing paint and adding medium, sometimes it can start to get bubbly. So I just like to like tap or I'll tap underneath with my nails to get bubbles out. Okay, so now we're going to test it again and just lift up. Do we still have a peak? It's getting better. I'm going to grab the dotting rod and we'll just test it out. I can still see a peak though, so I'm guessing it's still a little too thick. So see how that still has that nipple? So we want to add some more. Okay, so now I'm just looking again at the paint, lifting up, it's becoming more of a mound. And we're just trying to see if this peak goes down, which it is. So I feel like we're getting close. We will just test it. I'm looking underneath. It's definitely more of a mound now than a peak, so that's good. And it's starting to flatten out a bit. Still has a little bit of a mound. So we can try just making this a little bit thinner. I'm running out of room in my palette, so I need to remove some of that paint. Okay, so we are just going to add a little bit more of that fluid medium, and then I think that we should be good. Okay, so there are a few bubbles in there. I just kind of like to poke them as I go, but then we're gonna lift up our brush and is there peaks? It's more of a mound and it is self-leveling pretty quickly. A little bit of a mound, but it is going down quick. So I feel like we are close. So I feel like that is probably as good as it's going to get. And I know it's a very subtle difference, but you can see that one's like much more of that nipple look. And then this one is just more like a mound or more like domed instead of such a big, um, large mound in the center there. Can you see those? So you can just see this one is a little bit more thick paint, and then you can see the difference as we thin it out. It gets more flat. So that is more in the range that we want. So again, that is how you can thin out your paint 
If it's too thick, you can get um, a fluid medium or a flow medium. I will link a few of these in the description of the video for you guys to take a look. But I really like the Liquitex brand. So now we are just going to use this paint as an example. Um, we can actually probably use this one. So this is a good consistency, but I just wanna show you because sometimes paint is the opposite. It can be a little bit on the thin side. So if you get a paint that is too thin, you can thicken it by using a gel medium. So this is the Liquitex Gloss Gel Medium. And all of these gel, or all of these mediums come in like different finishes, gloss, matte, satin, so whatever you prefer. This is a gloss gel. So I'm just going to give you an example. Obviously I don't want my paint to be this thick, but I just wanna show you what this looks like. So that's really thick, as you can see. So whatever paint you put that in, it's going to thicken it right up. So I just put that into our deco art and I just wanna show you what it does. So it just gave it a little more body. We can test it out with our dotting rod. So now you can see, whereas before they dried nice and flat, the deco art, but now with the gel medium in it, they have those mounds, which means it's too thick, but I just wanted to show you how um, sometimes like yellow colors or white, I've noticed white uh, acrylic paint sometimes is really runny. So if you have a runny paint, um, you can add a gel medium to thicken up the paint a little bit. Okay, so I hope that helps you with texture. I do just wanna show you one more or a couple more um, brands of paint. So if you guys follow my artwork, <clears throat> you might notice that I have a lot of texture and dimension in mine. And that is because I use some of the squeeze paint that is a little bit thicker and makes plump 3D dots. So we will start with the Nouveau. So if you want these like pearl looking paints, then something like Nouveau is great. Um, these are also bliss drops. These are made by a fellow dot artist, Tara with Deserted Bliss. And these are very comparable to Nouveau. I am going to show you what these ones look like. So again, very thick, like domed, pearl-like paint. And they dry this way too. They dry nice and plump. So if you want something handmade by a fellow artist, the, these are a great option. I will link these in the description below. And then this is another like dimensional paint. So this is Tulip. I get this at Michael's and it's in the fabric section, so dimensional fabric paint, but these also make nice dimensional dots. The only downside to the tulip is that they leave peaks like a Hershey Kiss, which I do not like but they do make nice swooshes. So if you take a dotting tool and you go right 
down that peak. You can turn those into really thick dimensional swooshes. We'll go over this more in our um, swoosh video, but I just wanted to show you that. Um, you can also use these to make strings of dots, it's the bliss drops. So there we have some different texture and dimension on those. These all dry raised like that. So if that's what you're going for, those paints are great options. Um, definitely just check out your fabric section at your craft store and see if they have dimensional fabric paint. Nouveau drops are usually used for like scrapbooking. So I buy these, the manufacturer is called Tonic Studios. That's who makes this. So you can buy these on the Tonic Studio website. They are sold out of colors a lot of the time. So I will buy from either Tonic Studios or scrapbook.com or Honeybee Stamps sells these. I don't know if they're available in all countries, but if you just Google Nouveau drop paint, you will hopefully have a few sites come up that sell these. Again, these are bliss drops made by Tara at Deserted Bliss, another fellow artist, and I will link these paints in the description of the video. And that is all I have for you guys on paint consistency. I hope that this helped you get an idea of what the paint consistency can be like. I just want to remind you that if you don't have deco art, that's totally fine. You can just find a paint that you like and then use either a gel medium or a fluid or flow medium to get the consistency of paint that you like. If you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comments and we will see you on the next video. If you are interested in learning more from me, I teach weekly live classes over on Patreon. Once you become a Patreon subscriber, you will have instant access to a library of all of my past classes. I also share other things on Patreon, such as my color palette recipes and exclusive discount codes to your favorite dotting suppliers. There is also a 24 hour group chat where you can interact with myself and the community and share photos of your work and ask questions. And you will also have access to Patreon Messenger where you can message me at any time. All right, I hope to see you guys over on Patreon. Details are located in the description of this video.